The story kicks off with Thomas Lasky, a cadet in the United Nations Space Command. Alongside some fellow cadets, they all acknowledge the possibility of facing an enemy in the future. However, Thomas is uncertain about his own abilities. Several months later, Thomas and his squad, the Hostility Squad, are assigned a training exercise. Tasked with simulating a war scenario against another team, their leader, Walter, insists on a frontal attack. Thomas, having a different strategy in mind, suggests going around to make the opposing team surrender. Despite Thomas's suggestion, Walter sticks to the original plan. Thomas decides to go solo into the field, but things don't go well, he gets shot by the enemy, resulting in their squad's loss. April, the squad leader, expresses her frustration at their lack of teamwork and repeated failures. Captain Black, their superior, reprimands the team for their poor performance and warns them of potential expulsion if they don't improve. Following Thomas's mistake, tensions rise within the squad. Thomas finds himself defending his actions, arguing that the orders were unwise. However, everyone insists on the importance of following commands. This disagreement leads to a rift between Thomas and his closest friend, Skylar, as Thomas questions the rationale behind the war, seeing the opposing faction, the insurrectionists, as overtaxed farmers rather than the proclaimed terrorists. Skylar, on the other hand, emphasizes their violent actions, citing the innocent lives they've taken. Consequences soon follow as Thomas is summoned to Colonel Murphy's office for disobeying orders. She expresses her belief in his potential as a skilled soldier and emphasizes the high expectations his mother and brother have for him. Later that night, Thomas watches recordings left by his brother, who provided daily updates on the war. Their shared game of chess highlights Thomas's strategic prowess, consistently winning against his brother. In a moment of reflection, Thomas knocks on the wall, signaling Tyler, they're in the adjacent room. This silent exchange of knocks becomes a poignant connection between them, expressing both a silent farewell and a reconciliation after their earlier disagreement. Buoyed by Tyler's response to his nightly knocks, Thomas feels a sense of joy. The next day, Michael engages in accessing a classified military recording, cautioned by Dima about the risks of nodding along with such confidential files. Undeterred, Michael persists in uncovering hidden information. Simultaneously, Thomas continues watching his brother's recordings, but their reconciliation is interrupted by a debate on the necessity of the war against the insurrectionists. Despite their differences, they manage to make amends. The following morning, a drill alarm disrupts their routine, signaling the squad to get ready urgently. April awaits them at their assigned station, but a disagreement between Walter and Thomas over unlocking the door leads to a delay. This delay causes one of them to be ill-prepared, resulting in a failed test. Captain Black arrives, announcing a final test the next day, intensifying the pressure on the squad to succeed or face expulsion from the academy. As Michael delves deeper into recovering the classified videos, he begins noticing peculiar occurrences within the footage, unable to fully decipher their meaning. Despite Dima's cautionary advice, he extracts a promise from her not to disclose anything to her mother, a high-ranking colonel in the army. The next morning unfolds with the squad gathered at the breakfast table. April's displeasure lingers from the previous night's incidents involving Walter and Thomas. In an assertive move, she demands their food, which they surrender. However, Walter's deliberate mention of Thomas's deceased brother sparks fury within Thomas, leading him to tackle Walter to the ground, initiating a physical altercation. Colonel Murphy intervenes, separating the two and summoning Thomas for instigating the fight. Expecting punishment, Thomas is taken aback when Murphy expresses admiration for his actions. She urges him to tap into his inner strength and surprisingly lets him off without repercussions. Later, during a squad lesson, they delve into the history of the Second Punic War, discussing the scenario where the Roman Republic possessed a significantly larger army than Hannibal's forces. In the historical narrative, Hannibal cleverly exploited Roman pride and overconfidence. Sacrificing a segment of his army as a diversion, he maneuvered to surprise and devastate the Roman forces. The Romans, underestimating Hannibal, fell into his strategic trap. This lesson resonates profoundly with the squad, never underestimate the opponent and grasp what they might sacrifice to secure victory. Post-class, Thomas and Tyler engage in discussing their takeaways. Thomas remains somewhat unimpressed, but Tyler advises him that to enact change and halt the war, he should aspire to become a leader others will willingly follow. The subsequent morning marks the squad's final test of the term. April delivers a motivating speech, and just before the arena challenge commences, Thomas requests leadership of the squad from April. Initially hesitant, she grants him command, stressing the imperative of leading the team to victory. The exercise centers on capturing the flag, 
prompting Thomas's team to gather at their flag, awaiting his direction. During the exercise, Thomas observes the opposing team gathering an ops to keep his squad in place, leading to some restlessness among his teammates as they await further direction. Unbeknownst to them, Thomas's plan unfolds as he spots the rival team moving into the anticipated position. Seizing the moment, Thomas issues an unexpected command. He instructs his team to remove their helmets, effectively nullifying the tracker signals. Perplexed, his teammates comply with his unorthodox order. The opposing team, tracking the signal, arrives at their expected location, only to find abandoned helmets. In that instant, Thomas's squad launches a surprise attack from behind, effectively neutralizing the enemy. Pushing forward towards the enemy flag, Thomas unexpectedly loses consciousness before reaching his objective. Regaining consciousness in the medical center, Thomas learns of an allergic reaction to the cryo-injection. Advised to rest while medical experts assess the severity of the allergy, he spends the day asleep. Upon waking, he resumes watching his brother's recordings, finding solace in the memories. Amidst the aftermath of the successful exercise, the squad receives an urgent voice call from Michael, prompting them to assemble in his room. There, Michael unveils recently recovered classified videos that depict an unusual collaboration between Marines and insurrectionists. Both groups, traditionally enemies, are seen fleeing from an undisclosed threat. The footage reveals a reflection in the visor of an elite soldier's helmet, hinting at a terrifying presence. Unfortunately, the image is too obscure to identify the nature of the threat before they can delve deeper into the investigation. Before they can further discuss their findings, the squad is summoned to the cafeteria for dinner. Over the meal, they exchange speculations about the mysterious enemy. However, Thomas is called into Colonel Murphy's office, where he learns that the medical results indicate a severe allergy to the cryo-injection. Murphy presents him with a release form, leaving the decision of whether to stay or leave in his hands. Colonel Murphy's words weigh heavily on Thomas as she presents him with the choice of discharge if he opts to leave, urging him to contemplate his sacrifices. Conflicted, Thomas retreats to his room, seeking solace in the recordings of his mother discussing his brother's passing. However, his introspection is interrupted by Michael, urgently beckoning him to witness something crucial. Michael manages to clarify the obscured image reflected in the helmets, but his attempts to magnify it result in the computer wiping out the image entirely. Panicked by the possibility of being discovered, Michael rushes off to find Dima, anxious about potential repercussions for his unauthorized activities. Seeking clarity, Thomas takes a walk and encounters a fellow cadet perched on a container. He confides in her about his allergy and the uncertainty surrounding his decision. She probes about his departure, to which Thomas admits he's yet to finalize his choice. In a quiet moment, they share a kiss, the connection offering a brief respite from his turmoil. Suddenly, a compound wide alarm blares, summoning everyone back to the building urgently. Suddenly, an emergency evacuation is declared, prompting everyone to seek safety within the tether. Uncertainty shrouds the building as the squad congregates, only to witness elite forces descending from the sky, signaling an imminent attack. Panic ripples through the occupants as chaos unfolds. Amidst the tumult, April endeavors to maintain order among her squad, directing them to await their turn for access to the tether. However, consumed by fear, Dima, leveraging her mother's A40 clearance, breaks the line, rushing into an elevator leading to the tether. The remaining squad members queue up, anticipating their turn for the elevator. Tragedy strikes as a missile strikes the elevator, obliterating it and claiming the lives of all inside, including Dima. The severed tether plummets toward the building, narrowly missing the surviving squad members as they hastily escape. Taking refuge in the lower levels, they peer through a window, only to witness a horrifying sight, the attackers are extraterrestrial beings. These merciless aliens unleash devastation, systematically annihilating everyone in their path. As the Marines valiantly attempt to stave off the alien onslaught, the squad makes a dash for the armory, seeking to arm themselves against the formidable threat looming outside. The squad's attempts to access the armory end in frustration as the doors remain sealed shut. Their situation worsens as the aliens employ invisibility, rendering them nearly impossible to confront. Fleeing to the basement, their escape proves futile as Genji falls victim to the unseen threat. Huddled in the basement, the squad tries to evade detection, but the aliens persist in their pursuit. Walter selflessly sacrifices himself, providing a diversion for the squad to escape, but he meets a tragic end at the hands of the alien. As the remaining squad members face imminent danger, an elite soldier named Chief intervenes, dispatching the threatening alien. Chief reveals the grim truth, they are the last survivors on Earth, with a mere 15 minutes to reach the pelicans for evacuation. 
Chief swiftly unlocks the armory, equipping the squad with weapons before leading them through the compound strewn with the bodies of the fallen. Upon exiting the building, they are spotted by the aliens, drawing hostile fire that injures Michael. Chief directs the squad to an armored vehicle for safety while he fends off the aliens. Thomas joins the squad in the armored car, engaging in a fierce firefight against the relentless attackers alongside his surviving comrades. In a race against time, the squad races towards the Pelican for safety, dodging relentless alien fire within the cold storage area. Chief's exceptional combat prowess becomes their shield, as he skillfully neutralizes most of the alien threats. However, an unexpected alien appearance causes a catastrophic crash, rendering their vehicle immobile. Acknowledging the urgency, Chief directs the squad towards the extraction point while he combats the encroaching aliens. Prioritizing the wounded, he tends to Michael's leg wound, utilizing his final bandage to staunch the bleeding. But the situation takes a dire turn when Chiller reveals a grave stomach injury. Chief urges the squad to press forward to the Pelican, demanding they persist without pause. Despite their best efforts, Chiller's condition deteriorates rapidly, halting their escape midway. Realizing the severity, Chiller bids a final farewell, entrusting her tag to Thomas before quietly passing away, a poignant moment marking the squad's painful loss amidst their desperate bid for survival. Chief arrives, warning the squad about more aliens closing in. They rush towards the pelican but meet a huge alien blocking their path. Quick thinking Thomas distracts the alien, leading it away while Chief seizes the opportunity to detonate a bomb on its back, sacrificing himself to take down the threat. Miraculously, Thomas survives, and they reach the pelican, rescued by skilled soldiers. As they escape, they witness Earth in ruins. Chief praises Thomas's bravery and gives him a strange black rock from the fallen alien. Jumping ahead in time, we see an older Thomas, still holding onto the tag in the mysterious black rock. He steps into a cryopod, representing humanity's last stand against the aliens. It's a cliffhanger ending, leaving us wondering about the outcome of this final battle. Thanks for tuning in.